You should be hearing me shortly. We're going to be talking about division and unity. Well, the smearing of this normal kid, white kid, of course, conservative kid, of course, um, and all that. But it's causing a lot of division because people overreact to stuff. One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hague Report, the Hague Report, la, la, la. Good morning, guys. So, good morning, guys. I'm James Hake of the Hake Report. It is Sunday, May 26th, 2019, and... That means that tomorrow is Memorial Day, so happy Memorial Day to everybody. And make sure that you pay respects to the uh, veterans. We will be streaming live on the Jesse Lee Peterson Show, by the way, tomorrow. And we do have church today, um, Church with Jesse Lee Peterson, via Bond Rebuilding the Man on YouTube, as well as Facebook, and of course, JLP Talk, Periscope, and of course, Jesse Lee Peterson, D Live. By the way, speaking of D Live, I am streaming on D Live on my channel, and let me see if I can. Uh, oh shoot! Let me turn off my sound. <laughs> I do want to talk about this uh, this young man who got smeared by um, by the left, and then people on the right tend to overreact to the type of thing that he said. Or he so-called said, I don't know that he ever said it. He certainly typed it. <laughs> um, some so-called friends of his, um, some so-called friends of his totally turned on him. And he should have known better, I guess, but he's a kid, so it doesn't, uh, it really doesn't matter. Um... But people are really overreacting to it, and it's causing a lot of division, I notice, in the um, conservative side of the world. A lot of um, high emotions and stuff. And I don't know how this kid is reacting to it, really. Um, it's a young man by now. so he's a, I don't know how this young adult male is reacting to it. Um, I'm going to refrain from using names because, uh, but you can figure out who it is. You can go ahead and show pictures if you want, Joel. But, um, and it's in the description. But I, but I just, I'm not really that involved in it, <clears throat> but I am concerned about, like, people just really overreacting and becoming div divided. You know how Trump talks about we need to be united? And how the Bible talks about we need to be united? And Jesse Lee Peterson talks about uh, conservatives need to unite and not be divided and weak and judging each other and stuff like that. And the Christians do this a lot. And it's not just Christians, too. It's all, cons all people, right? But we're supposed to be on the side of what's right, right? But then these people are judging this young man and this young man and the people who are defending this young man are judging the people that are judging him. And it's a real mess. I happen to uh, kind of defend what this guy did in the sense that it's really not a big deal. It's so dumb. It's it's almost not newsworthy, except that it's um, except that it's uh, a taboo word that he repeated, and some taboo sayings, actually kind of nasty sayings that he typed allegedly. Um, but before I get to that, um, I wanted to read some texts that I received on Thursday because I want to make sure we get to them and, um, and all of that. But uh, again, make sure that you respect the fallen soldiers because that's what Memorial Day is about. Memorial Day is about the fallen soldiers, the men who died um, while supposed to be fighting for this country of all the wars um, so yeah definitely um, pause and consider that we are streaming tomorrow like I said the office the bond office will be closed so if you try to call the office you may not get us 
most likely. But you can call into the radio show as normal. We're keeping the, we're keeping the streaming schedule. It's so cool. Um, let's see. Did I leave off on a, did I leave off in the middle of a point? So on Thursday, I was talking about this stupid abortion thing. You know how, how abortion is somehow controversial? Like the fact that it should be outlawed basically completely is a, somehow a controversial idea. The fact that you should not kill the baby in the womb. And people totally overreact to it. There was this guy, <laughs> this British, of course, liberal beta male singer, front, sing, front man from some band um, from overseas visiting Alabama. And he's getting all up on his high horse because conservatives compared uh, 60 million plus uh, babies killed in the womb since um, uh, Roe v. Wade to the Holocaust, to all those, you know, all those genocide things that happened or may have happened. And um, this guy is all overreacting to it, saying that's so terrible. And he's calling the conservatives monsters and uneducated and stuff like that. I don't know if he called them monsters, but he kind of implied that it's ridiculous and evil and outrageous and um, uneducated, uninformed, blah, blah, blah. Well, the so-called left does not believe in science because science says it's a life being killed. I understand that they're not people that are in the middle of their lives. They have developed a whole lot of friendships and stuff like that. But uh, out of sight, out of mind, these people, the left likes to dehumanize human babies that are being killed inside the womb. They like to dehumanize them. They like to call them fetuses as though that's not a human being. <laughs> All kinds of madness. Or they like to call them, even worse, they like to call them fertilized eggs. <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, so this guy is going off on stage in Alabama and talking about women's rights and stupid, ridiculous lies. And why saying lies? Because the women's right doesn't, women doesn't have the right to kill her baby or the father's baby or God's baby. And it's not her body. It belongs to the Lord or maybe it belongs to Satan. I don't know. But uh, here's a text about reproductive rights um, from a young man who texted me. Women complain about their reproductive rights. And actually men, beta males do that too. The women make the decision to end a pregnancy that required both man and woman to create. The reality is the woman is violating the man's reprodu reproductive right, right pr to reproduce, right? If they're both in on it, they're violating the unborn child's right to life, meaning if the man is on the side of having the abortion. Many times, if not most times, the man is not for the abortion. The woman wants it, the man does not want it. The man does not want his child killed. The man does not want his reproductive rights violated. <laughs> um, it's so ridiculous that they call it reproductive rights. They mean killing the baby's rights. <laughs> killing the reproduce, pre reproduction. Aborting the reproduction. So there you have it. Reproductive rights would be if um, you don't want to be forcefully sterilized as Margaret Sanger wanted people to be sterilized. <laughs> And so that's a nice, that was a nice text. Um, Bible Go-To Guy texted me as well. And he was talking about a lot of whites, a call, a call it was regarding a call where I, that I received where a lot of whites, whites, are turning away from Christianity. They're blaming Christianity for the weakness of the white people. You know, the turn the other cheek stuff where they take the joke too far. They don't really know what turn the other cheek means. So they just roll over and let everybody, the evil people take care of, take over the country. Um, so I, I posited to that man, the caller, that that's not real Christianity, that's weak, fake Christianity. And if there was, um, there's probably always, there has always been fake Christianity, even prior to Christianity, there was fake religion. That's why the Bible talks about true religion versus false. So 
Bob Goto guy says, real Christians crossed the ocean and founded the greatest country with freedom and justice for all, and science, as a result, blossomed in America. Interesting. Yeah, because when you're moral, you have more freedom. There's more high-trust society. There's, uh, there's all that stuff. You have more ability to do the stuff that are kind of be ex kind of end up being extra, not total necessities. Because the bare necessities, like you have to farm, you have to get food, you have to like kill animals for food, you have to have shelter and clothing. Those are like the bare necessities that we all, well, many of us learned in school, right? Food, shelter, and clothing. The necessities. And beyond that, I mean, clean water, blah, blah, blah. Those are needs, right? Those are not rights. Those are needs. Um, but beyond that, there's science. There's the arts, which are so corrupt nowadays. There is um, podcasts now. All kinds of stuff. All, that, all those are like extras. And the more, f more moral you are, the more free the society can be, the more you can do that stuff without being robbed blind. But nowadays... Like, all the corruption has been creeping into our country, so people are losing their free speech, people are losing their Second Amendment rights. The left hates free speech, the left hates the Second Amendment. They don't believe in the Bill of Rights. They don't believe in truth or anything. And they're not Christians. Some of them are fake Christians. There's a lot of liberal Christians, and then there's a lot of fake conservative Christians. Which is why all the discord and division and hatred and backbiting and false accusations of false teacher, false prophet. You'll see that a lot. And mostly that's, those accusations are against the decent people or the semi-innocent people. And so that brings me to this N-word drama. And I'm going to try to um, say this briefly so that I can get to the callers. Because the phone number is 888-775-3773. 888-775-3773. So there is this kid who's like a normal kid, uh, by all appearances. These are my impressions because I haven't really watched him closely. I'm not that interested in what kids have to say, honestly. A little bit, but I just haven't happened to watch him. Kids tend to be put up on a pedestal, and like the stuff that they say is, especially if it's coming from a liberal angle, is deemed gospel. Um, yeah, kind of like the Parkland kids. Um, you know, those, these far-left liberal brainwashed kids, um, group of kids, promoted anti-Second Amendment stuff. Basically, gun, gun control, which is a violation of the Second Amendment, whether they know it or not. So they're brainwashed against that. So the left likes to use them, and they like to use kids for um, promoting transgender stuff and gay rights stuff and all that. Make, try to make it out to be so innocent. Uh, brainwash the kids and violate them and tell them, violate them in the sense that you brainwash them to believe that gay is okay when they already know that it's not. You have to kind of um, traumatize them into making them think, oh, it's fine, it's normal, stuff like that. So then there's kids on the conservative side. Sometimes those get propped up because conservatives tend to be, um, if, they're not, if they're not solid and based in what they, in, on a solid foundation, they'll, they'll try to reach to political correctness and appeal to the same thing the left does. Use, use blacks as just props for like black conservatism. Just like the left use blacks as props for black liberalism. Um... And they'll try to, like, use kids and women and stuff like that. It's so ridiculous and makes me want to throw up. So I'm not for using kids and propping them up on a big platform, but it happens nowadays. And so this, this normal kid gets propped up on a big platform and he makes it to the Oval Office because um, he's an impressive, decent-seeming, normal, conservative kid, pro-Second Amendment you know, pro everything decent. Looks like a good kid, right? Well, under the surface, he's a teenager, 16, 17, 18 now. And uh, some stuff has come out about him. Put out by trash websites, liberal media websites, total trash, SJW, social justice warrior, just total crap. And I hate to use that word, but I just have to, because that's what it is. It's just nasty waste of... Um, space. 
So, like, the Huffington Post and Daily Beast put out this smear on him, Huffington Post specifically, put out this smear on him that, uh, apparently, some of this, this young man's, uh, ex-friends leaked Skype chats and Google Doc screenshots, Google document screenshots, I guess these kids, um, these high school students shared a Google Doc for study notes and study group and they played and have had fun and got real edgy, especially this guy. Got real, real edgy saying the most taboo stuff that you can say. The N-word a bunch of times <laughs> to the point that he joked about, I'm getting really good at typing N-word. And he didn't say N-word, he s spelled it all out. And then um, he also talked about uh, kill the such and such, kill the such and such, and made all these references to, you know, total taboo stuff that you're not supposed to, that you're not supposed to say. And when you tell a kid, especially a white kid, who are the most repressed people, um, that you're not supposed to say something, they're going to want to say it. And so that's, hence, that's what he's doing. That's how I read it. Um, nobody with any, who is sane and calm and looking at it cl with clear eyes believes that he meant these things that he said. He even, I think he said, might have even said that he wanted to die. Um, nobody really be takes it seriously. Nobody that's sane. But some people are taking it too crazy. Um, and making it just, this kid is cussing and all kinds of stuff. And it doesn't really make me look at him differently, except that, it, okay, he's a normal kid. <laughs> Before, he looked like an innocent, humble kid, but now he looks more like a normal kid. <laughs> and so I have a screenshot up where, hey, N-words, hey, I'm mad, I will effing make blah blah blah, reference to a video game, map of Douglas and practice kill all the bleep. Uh, bleeping J's, F the J's, Hitler, blah, 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 Holocaust, blah, blah, blah. Just all this um, stuff that's edgy and, and tr very trendy among the young folks. And part of the judgment on these people is a, a um, generation gap. You know, the older you are, the more brainwashed and believing in racism and traumatized you are by that. The younger you are, especially if you're sane and conservative, um, or just, you know, white and, and, I don't know. The younger you are, the less guilt, false guilt that you have about this issue, about the so-called racism thing, and, um, far removed because you know that genocide had nothing to do with you. You know, supposedly the ge genocide happened, um, in the 30s, 40s, and stuff like that. And there's been a lot of hatred towards various groups and violence towards various groups. Targeted and this kid that he knows it has nothing to do with him. So he's just having fun in game stock and um, Even the alt-right kids the alt-right kids. It's a really a reaction to The attack on the white people they see the insanity the double standard this the ridiculousness That's happening among oh you can't say the n-word, but everybody else can Well, not everybody else can only the blacks can and the Hispanics take liberty to do it, too. They don't care so the more shameless and degenerate you are, the more you get away with, because people have low standards for you. And um, so this kid did this, this who's a young, now a young man, and his so-called friends leaked it. One young woman who, he talked to one young woman via Skype, a girl, a female friend, and he referred to another female friend, a mutual friend, as a 7 out of 10 girl, meaning referencing like, how desirable or whatever she is, how attractive she is. And so he refers to her as a 7 for 10. And then he says that this woman, this young lady, only dates N-word jocks. <laughs> Which, if you say the real word, it kind of rolls off the tongue. But he's, he said that. And uh, he said, pasty, pasty Jewish Jew is less than N-word jocks, whatever. So I don't know if this kid is Jewish or if he's just white, but uh, he said he, ref he <laughs> made fun of this. He's talking, tr talking crap about this young lady 
to another girl. Kind of girly stuff, right? But he did that. And, you know, interracial dating is, is always uh, something remarkable. <laughs> Almost always something remarkable, something to remark about. And especially because it's taboo to, to reference it, he's doing that. And um, somebody, oh, somebody who helped prop this guy up, so a after some tragedy happened, some, this tragedy happened, this violent encounter that affected this kid and many other kids, um, this kid is the only sane one that's supporting, you know, the Second Amendment and stuff like that. And so all these conservatives, including black or mixed race black conservatives, are supporting this guy, elevating his platform in order to combat all the brainwashed liberal kids to, um, you know, support the Second Amendment. And come to find out that this kid did this, you know, typed this stuff, some of these black conservatives and mixed race black conservatives feel um, betrayed. The only person who should feel betrayed is, is this kid. This kid was betrayed by his friends who went to the media with his online comments, his private online comments, in which he was joking around. And now everybody, uh, some people are assuming the worst in his in intentions. They think, you don't joke by saying N-word, 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 N-word. And this, so this, I'm kind of paraphrasing a person who reacted to this negatively. Um, and this person who reacted to this negatively, when he was doing this, I was watching him. On a on a video platform, <laughs> when he was doing it, I was chuckling <laughs> because I'm like, yes, you do. <laughs> people, well, you might not, but young people do, and especially white people. White people, yeah, it's shocking and and funny, and it's edgy. And some people may not react kindly to it, but other people like react like nervous to it, and it's just shocking. And um, even when this guy was repeating that, he did it repeatedly. Like, he said it must have 40 or 50 times, N-word, N-word, N-word. <laughs> and I was, as he was doing it, I was like chuckling. But he's serious about it, and he's like mad. And I can definitely cut him some slack because I understand there is a lot of brainwashing and people are emotional. Most people, most human beings are emotional, are going to overreact to one thing or another. And I'm not telling this guy, this person who overreacted to it, to shut up. He said, anybody who's telling me to shut up is, you're racist. Well, I'm not telling him to shut up, and racism doesn't exist. But this person really believes in racism. He's kind of emotional, conservative guy. I really respect him, actually. This person who's overreacting to the young guy saying the N-word a bunch of times. N-word. So, and then this, there's another black conservative who's like young, a minor still to this day underage and he's getting up all on his high horse judging this young man and this young man is um i don't know exactly how this young man is reacting but he did tweet out a quick comment about it because it, be it really blew up he became like he was in charge of like the young people's um some some division of a really top national conservative uh, organization, kind of a spokesperson, spokesman, spokesperson, that's very politically correct. So he tweeted, like, quick comments about, um, about this, and then it's a statement, it's all kind of politically correct, talking about how it was, he said some horrible things. Um, quick note on the callous comments I made a few years ago in high school that are now circulating. And you see one young man underneath it, young minor, actually, re talking about, with all due respect, the comments you made, blah, 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 or not. You didn't give a proper apology. And then so he goes in and talks about what he did. And I call it a an apology because he's talking about there are screenshots circulating that include offensive comments to former classmates and I made a few years ago, long before the shooting. In some cases, it was like a month before the shooting. And he says, we were 16-year-olds making idiotic comments using callous and inflammatory language in the effort to be as extreme and shocking as possible. It seems very, um, b quite believable, actually. I'm embarrassed by it. See, he shouldn't be embarrassed by it. 
I mean, it kind of is embarrassing, but it's really not anything to be embarrassed about it. And he said, the past year has forced me to be more mature and grow in an incredibly drastic way because it's been a year, almost a year and a half since that um, attack. So, blah, 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 blah. And he said, I can and will do better moving forward. That's such a shame. It's kind of like the Joe Biden thing. I, I relate to um, this woman who defended Joe Biden and wants... There's this black woman, Whoopi Goldberg, who's like, I don't want Joe Biden to stop doing what he's doing. Because, you know, he gets all handsy with the young women or the, with the women and, you know, gets very affectionate. And that's what she's referring to. Um, she's like, I don't want him because we want people to be free, right? And so behind closed doors, you should be, be free to be edgy if you want to. But... Uh, you know, generally you should stop, you should cut that stuff out because people don't take it the right way, as is obvious. That's why I've kind of cut out my use of the so-called N-word for the most part. Um, so, this, this guy um, is being judged and then you see his, his tweets and then you see all these other conservatives tweeting underneath him. Some are f against him, and some are for him, and the people for him are attacking the people against him, and the people against him are attacking the people for him. And it's a mess because the people are becoming so divided. And that's the main thing that I'm not for, is this division. Because, um, for one, what he did and said is almost not even news. It is news in the sense that um, it's, a, it's funny, edgy, slightly offensive thing to say and people do overreact to it and so we have the ability to have this open conversation where the the guy that I respect that was really hurt by it and angry at it about it and that guy helped prop this guy up so I kind of understand but he's this kid this guy who was saying n-word 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 was not talking about these black conservatives he wasn't talking about anybody in particular except for the the N-word jocks that that 7 out of 10 girl was happened to be dating. But even then, it's like, whatever. Because think about yourself and the evil hatred that you've harbored towards other people. You shouldn't think too much about what people say behind, back, behind closed doors, behind your back, or even in talking in general. Really shouldn't, shouldn't take it too seriously. When people call whites racist, um, whites shouldn't be offended by it. It's the worst thing you can call a white. It can destroy their uh, career and stuff like that if people believe that you really are so-called racist or a pedophile or something. That's uh, like kind of the worst thing that you can call whites and it's worse than the n-word because if a white uses the n-word then he gets in trouble. If a black gets called the n-word, the white gets <laughs> in trouble. And if a white gets called the racist, then the white gets in trouble. If a black calls a person a white a racist, the black doesn't get in trouble. <laughs> So, except he gets, you know, some people th respect him a little bit less for it because throwing around the racist word is ridiculous. So, I hope that all made sense. He shouldn't have apologized. He did get, he did apologize. He got accepted to like Berkeley or something and people are trying to get him, get him un unaccepted f to that place just because he did this. It's so ridiculous. Um, and there's many more examples that I, that I have one more example of it, but I've held my collars on for so long. Let me get to some callers. Patrick out of New York, first time caller. How are you doing? Hey, hey what's up? Can you hear me? Yes. Are you on speakerphone though? Yeah, I just took it off. Guy. Okay. You know, I should be, I should be better now. Yeah, much better. Appreciate it. How's it going? Awesome, man. Good, good, good. Dude, those are some good texts you read up, uh, at the top of the show, man. Oh, yeah, about the uh, reproductive rights. Men, men's reproductive rights are being violated by women who commit abortion on, their ch on the men's children. <laughs> That's a wonderful argument. Yeah, it's, it's fact. It's totally true. And, yeah, the oh, woman oh, suffers more physically, but, hey, suffer. That's part of nature. You hate nature. You hate science. You hate God. You can't accept reality. That's basically what feminism is, hatred of... And unacceptance of reality. They believe in something fake called, like, equality, which is meaningless. Meaningless. Okay, go ahead, though. Suffer and die. <laughs> <laughs> or suffer and kill. What a mess. 
Oh my god! All right, man, that was good stuff, man. And I was um profound about the, the this kid you were talking about. Honestly, I think um you were talking about kids being used to like uh, promote ideas, like we overvalue kids. Yeah, whether conservatives or liberals, that's pretty deep, man. Yeah, it's a shame because this kid should be a no name, really. <laughs> All those uh, and all the all of his classmates too, because his classmates are being propped up by the liberals, and it's so wrong. It's so evil. They're just brainwashed, and then they're being rewarded in their egos for what they're doing. It's such a evil setup. The the adults who are treating these kids this way, that is so nasty. Yeah, he's too, I agree with you. He's too young to have a platform like that. Yeah. And then too, his parents should be telling him not to post things. Like my parents told me. You should be careful what you say yeah. in writing. That's true. Jesse is Jesse kind of knew that as common sense. You know, even even though I trashed earlier, I, I made fun of I didn't make fun of, but I criticized the older people who are brainwashed to believe in racism. They did have a lot of sense in that they didn't write stuff. They didn't take pictures. Of course it was harder to write stuff back then. It was harder to take pictures. It was harder for it to be circulated. Um but like, Jesse never took pictures or wrote letters that would be, like, compromising. And um, a lot of older people are smart in that way. So people are throwing... Some, some of the mistakes that the young people make, they trash boomers, um, is a lack of respect for your elders and for the common sense and th traditions. There's wisdom in traditions and common sense and, and uh, not going hog wild with your edgy talk, <laughs> especially online. Yeah, you're right, Patrick. Oh, my gosh. So I got, I got one for you. Let me know what you think of this. There's no such thing as gay marriage. Yeah. The That's... purpose of marriage is to create a family. So for a marriage to be, for a marriage to produce children, only a man and a woman can't do A woman and a woman can't do that. Right. A man and a man can't do that. They're, for a gay couple to produce children, they have to have infidelity. Yeah. Which, by nature of itself, cancels the relationship. That's a good point. You know... So how can a ma It can't be a marriage if you need to do what functionally annuls a marriage in order to accomplish the key function of what a marriage is for. Yeah, they can't even really have actual real sex. They have fake sex. It's kind of disgusting reference, but it's true. <laughs> true I'm yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah, man. You're you're right. It's and um it's a shame that the left uh pretends to care about the the gays. And then the right a lot of them do a lot of people, human beings, especially on the right, and actually on the left, everybody hates gays, basically, except for the people who've been born again of God and like actually have love in their hearts. Everybody else hates gays, whether they, um, because if you are, if you don't have love in your heart, you don't love anybody, so you hate everybody. Right. And so, like, the people that, the people that, yes, I do read the chat a little bit. Sorry about that. No, I'm not talking about the Covington teenager. Um, I was just reading some Periscope. But, yeah, um, a lot of people hate the homosexuals because and you heard it on the show this week on Jesse Lee Peterson's show um, this gay 19 year old or calls himself gay 19 year old oh and he had to kick him off I remember that one no he was he was fine right but he wasn't he wasn't getting vulgar and then this 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 so called Christian called in attacking Jesse and right. yeah Jesse did eventually hang up because he called him like the F word which is slang for the gay that you're not supposed right. to say so called which a lot of people do say behind closed doors kind of like Whatever. <laughs> like, like, kid just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um but yeah, you don't say that on a family radio show, family friendly radio show. So this right. guy is um totally judging the gay and meanwhile Jesse did the best thing that a Christian could do for the gay guy. Is like he already knows where Jesse stands and Jesse gave him like some good advice. And the guy seems to res this guy uh Javian, the nineteen year old who says that he's attracted to the same sex or whatever. Um, he, re he actually, despite that he just watches Jesse, he so-called, just to laugh at the so-called ridiculous things that Jesse says, 
and because Jesse is funny and entertaining anyways. But he also says true things, and this guy does respect Jesse. You can tell yeah, because he even, went yeah. and, he even went and he even went and at least made an attempt at forgiving his mother and stuff like that. So he really does respect Jesse. He's a there's there you know lost people come in all um, all forms, like right. the the homosexuals are lost people, but some of them are can be found. There's the the blacks that believe in racism. There's the whites that uh, say the N-word too much. <laughs> hate the Jews. Or, yeah, they hate the Jews, yeah. Uh, there's yeah, dude, there's was, um, people to be found among all these people. Yeah, there was a, there was a uh, guest Jesse had on his show, I want to say like a month back, and the guy was a Christian. He admitted that he was, he was like a Christian preacher. Yeah. And he was against homosexuality, but he himself admitted that he sinned. And yeah, he, like his logic, like pinned him in a corner where, like, the hatred, like the de- the devil just came out of that preacher because you could see, like, he was criticizing the gays so much, but he said every other sin is okay. As right, a preacher. Yeah, yeah, it's so ridiculous. That guy and Jesse was asking um, this this preacher guy. Uh, he was asking him really good, basic, innocent questions about was your flesh stronger than your spirit if you were walking in your flesh at the time that you sinned instead of walking in your spirit because he says that he sins to this day and so yeah. he, by instead of responding to that honest direct straightforward logical innocent question he called it a foolish question and said the, the bible says not to respond to foolish questions foolish questions are I don't know, that's not an example of a foolish question. And then there was another instance where Jesse asked a good, logical question about, um, you know, sin and, and judging. If you sin, aren't you a hypocrite for judging the homosexuals who also sin? Right. Um, because not only will you not enter into the kingdom of heaven, you're going to prevent the gays from entering the kingdom of heaven because he, he believes that the gays cannot repent and change, which they, they do. <laughs> Even the liberal gays change. There's a lesbian, a former lesbian, who's married to the mayor of New York. <laughs> the mayor of New York oh, is married to a former that, black uh, lesbian. I didn't know about that girl. Yeah. yeah. The one with the nappy head? I, she might have, I don't know, I can't, I can't picture her, but the there's... The Thrive NYC chick. She, she had a Thrive NYC program, and they lost like $10 billion, bro. Wow. Yeah, yeah she's, I mean, she's a, she right. was a lesbian, and now she's married to Bill de Blasio. According to Wikipedia, which is, you can uh, take it with a grain of salt, but Wikipedia only tends to slander conservatives. Or libel, oh libel. So anyways, Patrick, I appreciate it, man. Nice call. Hey, hey man, thanks for calling. And uh, they should tell that kid, 7 out of 10 is a good rating. Yeah, exactly. So I never learned this uh, rating system when I was in high school. I think I learned about it a little after. But, um, you know, supposedly that's misogynistic. That's pretty decent. That's a pretty girl. Cute. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I appreciate it, Patrick. Make sure you catch church uh, in an hour and a 20 minutes or so. Awesome, bro. I'll be there, man. Thanks for taking the call. All right. Thank you. Bye. Ryan. Ryan out of Concord, California. First time caller. Appreciate you hanging on so long, man. How are you doing? <laughs> thank you, James. Uh, it's good to talk to you. Yeah. Good to be talked to. Awesome. Um, I wanted to actually just make this quick. I'm on my break right now for work. Okay, wow. Um, but I wanted to call you and thank you for the news that you deliver on the Jesse Lee Peterson show. Cool, uh, man. The ones at the top of the hour, not the <laughs> headline stories. Okay. Yeah, because I normally don't catch the news on Fox or whatever, but when I listen to you in the morning, I'm able to get a lot of like current political stuff. Uh, such as William Barr and Trump and yeah. what goes on. But I just wanted to thank you and say good job and keep up the good work. Nice. Appreciate that. Yeah, I am I feel that I'm getting better at it, definitely more comfortable with it. And, um, yeah, that's what I wanted to do is to give, uh, you know, some, some headlines and some detail on stuff that's interesting to me. Some of it is, like, mind-numbingly boring, and I tend to ignore that stuff. Um, like, after a while, I get sick of the Barr stuff. Or sick of the whatever. There's various things going on in the world that I'm just not interested in. But I just, you know, go through Drudge, Fox News, sometimes heavy. And um, 
flesh it out with some details that I think would be interesting and present it as best I can. And so I'm well, glad that it's helpful. Because, yeah, I don't hear, I didn't, I didn't even know what was going on with William Barr. And when you said all the different things that were happening, especially with the investigation, yeah. I actually went and I had a guy go watch Fox and look it up and be like, oh, wow, like this is really happening. Yeah. So I just appreciate the news. Cool, man. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad to do well, it because, because Jesse's taking more and more calls and he's really helping people. And that frees him up to, kind of frees him up to do, you know, help people because that's really what he's about is helping people, young men and women wake up and older men and women wake up and, you know, come out of their fallen state. And so I can present a little news and then he can do some little reports and things like that, interview some people, but generally he can take the calls that he really wants to help people with. And he's doing that more than ever, and we've gotten rid of some of our news breaks, which were so obnoxious, in my opinion. I never, as a listener, I used to be a listener to the radio show. I would always, like, turn down the radio during the, you know, IRN, USA News, or whatever. Not that it was bad, it just wasn't interesting. I don't, I didn't like commercials or news and stuff like that. I didn't like listening to that stuff. No, it was horrible, you're right. You know, I actually used to watch the show, um, you guys didn't have the news. You would have, like, memes that would play. And yeah. Play, like, background music for right. memes. Right. Yep. Yeah, that was kind of fun for a little while, but it's tedious and uh, doesn't add a lot, and you tend to want to just cut it out. I'm consuming, too. Yeah. Yep. Totally. Anyway, I appreciate All it, right. Ryan. Thank you. you oh, it's amazing! Are you I'm coming to... Th- James. You, by the way, you coming to the men's conference June 15th? Are there tickets still available? I believe so. I believe so. Okay. I haven't heard otherwise. Yeah, I'll look. I want to go, but I right. mean, my father and my brother and I were going to go on this fishing trip. All right. I really want to come to Bond. Nice. So I'll try and make it, but I'll talk to you later, James. All right. Take care, Ryan. All right. Bye. Bye. Super Chats. Jordanos Desta says, good morning. Past, present, future, Tim. Past, present, future. Thank you, man. Nice to uh, see ya. By the way, thank you to Tim, shout out to Tim, past, present, and future, for setting up our Discord. Um, at times, I am woefully neglectful of some of this stuff, I'm a little remiss in getting back with you guys. Um, but uh, appreciate it, and it's a great thing that I hope to keep alive, hope we keep alive. Scott, James, my silent prayer sessions average about 20 minutes. I'm just curious, how long do yours average? That's a good question. I would say 10 to 30, 10 to 30 minutes. And by the way, Scott, are you the one from Colorado? Are you Scott from Colorado? Just curious. And is one of your questions, does one of your questions show up in the, in the July 6th, 2008 on Sunday service because there is a Scott from Colorado who asks who um, whose question was read towards the end of that Sunday service from like almost 11 12 years ago something like that real real says I'm white and women never tell me the n-word no <laughs> the n-word being no D Martin the third that's David from Kentucky really truly respectable southern man Got uh, the Tri-Blend Teespring shirt. Oh, the wall going up, I believe. And um, good guy. Super ch- gives us uh, super chats. Hasn't figured out how to type along with his super chat. And uh, if anybody who, who can help him do that, do that. Oh, Scott from Orange County. Okay. You, so you're not Scott from Colorado. Okay. Just curious. Um, come up to the men's for, uh, conference. Orange County is not that far away. People come up from San Diego, you know that. Um, let me get to a little bit of more of these stories and drama and stuff like that. There's this self-help guru, um, a motivational speaker, basically like an icon. The, the one that you think of when you think of motivational speaker or self-help guru or whatever. Um, and he's been around since like the 80s or maybe before, I don't know. He appears in movies. He, I, he strikes me as kind of politically correct, but he may have been less so back when political correctness was not so forced upon us. And this man also apparently said the N-word. 
and um, he really helps people out though. He he tends to well, I mean, he tries to anyways. He tries to push, you know, personal responsibility. If a woman is uh, this is stuff that I've heard hearsay, if a woman is having a um, by the way, I do have a YouTube channel. It's the Hake Report, or it's called just Hake, but you search the Hake Report, you can find it. For those on Periscope who are asking. But this guy, uh, some people call him a hypnotist or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. It may be true. But this guy is, you know, kind of accepted by the Oprah crowd, I wanted to say. Or at least back in the day he used to be. But then again, Trump was accepted by the Oprah crowd back in the day. Um... So he said there's there's footage that has come out of him apparently he's said the n-word a bunch of times to a black audience trying to help them get past the n-word really and I have a a screenshot of this article that's kind of explaining what his reasoning was and he's talking about basically if you're overreacting to it that means that this person who's making you angry has total control over you which happens to be true that's something Jesse says and it's just common sense. If somebody can make you mad, that's basically the number one thing somebody who hates you is going to try to do. People online, if uh, people hate each other online, they're going to try to comment and egg and needle and uh, disagree and just try to make you upset. That's what hateful people do is try to make you upset. And so if somebody saying the N-word makes you as a black person upset, this is what this guy is saying, which I agree with, then that person has total control over you. The person saying the N-word has total control over you. And um, so this guy is making this point, and then he he's tries his solution, which is kind of silly, really ridiculous, honestly. He sings this little song, I'm an N-word, you're an N-word, let's all be N-words. <laughs> he does his dance. Really cheesy. That's not really what solves the problem of you know, the heart issue of anger in your heart is evil. You don't solve it just by talking about it, just by repeating it. It doesn't take the power away. You know, blacks try, like to say that they use the N-word because it takes the power away. It doesn't take the power away. It just keeps it, keeps it um, popular. It makes it a popular word, and it makes whites want to say it, and then whites get in trouble and stuff like that. But... Uh, this is not what solves the problem, but, you know, he was just trying to make a point to, like, don't be so sensitive type of thing. Desensitize people to it, which you shouldn't be sensitive to words or to being, you shouldn't be able to be upset. And this man, according to some, he'll talk to a woman who is having marriage problems and the woman will be blaming the man, but he'll say, no, what about you? What did you do wrong? And that's so smart, right? That's so such basic common sense. It's wise. It's wisdom. It is to uh, personal responsibility. So he's a personal responsibility guy because that's how you become successful by being responsible. I mean, there's there you can cheat and lie and become worldly successful, but you won't you won't be as happy. So this guy's I don't know if this guy's a Christian. He doesn't seem to really push God or anything, but he's pushing some you know basic common sense stuff. Maybe a little bit of whatever else and he's made a that's been his career for decades since I was a baby and that's just decades ago <laughs> so now he's in trouble and this is not the only thing this trash website social justice warrior pro Obama website um, made this has a three-part series about this guy saying that four women accused him of sexual misconduct, whatever that means. Sexual misconduct could be like cheating on your wife, which is, which is a bad thing to do. Um, but the left truly does not care about that. And that's his business anyways. And so I, it's, I'm unclear what they mean by sexual misconduct. I didn't bother reading it. And for a, a man who's been around for decades and only four women are accusing him, that's not bad. <laughs> think about Bill Cosby. 60 w women supposedly accused him. I think they're bandwagoning. And I don't really believe any of them. You, I mean, you can't really believe any of them. You have to, like, say, consider people innocent unless proven guilty. But nowadays, the left likes to make um, men it, guilty until proven innocent. And the, they talked about unlimited power, which I don't know what that's about. 
but they're trashing this man. And I, I was thinking about it. I'm like, this man, I'm going to go ahead and name him Tony Robbins. He's been around forever, right? He, um, he's like an icon of success, becoming, you know, urging people to become successful on their own, which is something kind of conservative. And the liberals don't like that. And they want to knock down all of the icons. The icons like Bill Cosby is an icon of like so-called America's dad or whatever. I didn't know him as America's dad. I knew him as like a, a good guy, funny, um, just old school kind of guy. And um, some people don't think he's funny. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm not like hilarious, don't think he's hilarious, but I think he's, you know, when he has this kind of deadpan personality on, on the Cosby show, it's kind of funny. Kind of fun. Good guy. Seemingly. And so um, they're knocking down all these icons. Knocking down Tony Robbins. Knocking down Bill Cosby. Just all these people that have been around for decades. And all these people that are about personal responsibility. Because that's what... Um, and it's actually just responsibility, period. Bill Cosby was about responsibility, especially in his later years. And still is about that. And Tony Robbins is about responsibility. And so they want to get rid of responsibility. And men. And icons. That these people were kind of unshakable. Um, these people were just, you know, you, you couldn't even touch them. In terms of, you know, they're, uh, most people respected them and thought positively of them. Until now with Bill Cosby. A whole, most, I would venture to say that most people... Or at least most people th who speak publicly about it, a lot of people may not want to speak publicly about it, which is kind of a shame. A lot of people are, you know, their, their view of him has been tainted, which is a shame. They've ruined his good name. So that's what they're doing to Tony Robbins, in my opinion. They're doing the same thing as what they did to Bill Cosby. So I don't believe that stuff. Don't buy it, and who cares about the N-word, right? Just r relax. Um, here's another thing. There's these false accusations of, uh, of false prophet that I have happened to see sometimes. And some of them are by people who, pr who pretend to be fans, um, against Jesse. So we talked about this preacher that hates the gays, but he sins and he thinks that he's justified in hating gays, and he thinks he's justified in, he thinks that he can know God in sin, which is a direct contradiction of the Bible that he pr pretends to believe in. Um, so this person, there's an example of uh, people that, that don't believe in, um, they don't believe in, they don't believe in God, really. So there's this person who says, <laughs> this, is, this is funny, this person who says he's a fan, says he's from Africa. Jesse is a great life coach, but a false prophet. He spits crap like he just did here. Sin is disobedience of God's commandments. And this is a reference to um, an, an excerpt that we put out from church, shortcut from church, about when you're tempted to have sex, what is the sin? And the sin, he says, is the judgment that keeps you in these things that do, you do wrong. And so this guy says he's a great life coach, but a false prophet. What the heck? Jesse's not a life coach. That's Tony Robbins. If, if, even if Tony Robbins may not even be a life coach. And he's not a false prophet, but people are flippantly say that. So I'm like, you're mighty quick to cry false prophet over something you don't fully understand. If sin is only the act of disobedience, then why did Paul in the Bible say, but now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells, dwells in me. If sin live, so if sin lives, dwells in the man, then the sin is not merely the action. The sin is what dwells in him. Ah, so sin is not just the act of disobedience. And that's from Romans 7, 17. So then um, people go around falsely accusing Jesse when Jesse's saying biblical stuff. And... Um, Here's another one. I have more. I have more. Okay. They also talk about judging yourself. 
uh, you're not supposed to judge yourself or anyone else. Jesse says that, right? And they say that you shouldn't, they say, judge yourself is the sin? Not true. The sin is the act of defiance. He's nuts. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that. I don't have the screenshot for you. I'm just reading it. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that. It actually does. The interesting thing is that Jesse plays God. He judges. He's lying or overthinking it. <laughs> to say that Jesse overthinks anything is ridiculous. The Ten Commandments tells the story and lists the top ten sins that were under the Mosaic Law. It doesn't list sins. It lists rule, the commandments. And it says nothing of judging yourself. And I say... If sin is merely the act, then where does that leave the wicked, judgmental heart that perpetuates the acts? Paul says that it is sin living in him that causes him to do the acts. Are you more privy to, to what sin is than the Apostle Paul, who wrote part of the Bible? And further, the Apostle said, moreover, it, there's another Bible quote for you guys that believe in this fake idea of false teacher, when you guys are the, listening to the false teachers. Moreover, it is required in stewards that the one, that one be found faithful. Stewards being stewards of the good news. People that are, people that are given the knowledge of God and that are, are stewards of it who pass it on, who are responsible for passing it on. That's something that Jesse does. All preachers are supposed to do it. All Christians are supposed to do it, right? Um, moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. So if you're not faithful, then you're a sinner, and then you're not a Christian. You don't know God. Or you may be a Christian, but you're just not the born-again kind. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. It's Paul, the Apostle Paul speaking. He doesn't care if you judge him or if a court, human court judges him. Human court, by the way, that reminds me of, uh, what are these things called seminaries that that accredit pastors as real pastors, real accredited pastors, and who ordained you, that's called a human court. Huh. So you guys are believing in extra biblical things. You who pretend to believe in the Bible. You're believing in your own traditions. Uh, so he says, but with me it's a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. Paul said this. For I know nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But it is he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord comes, who will, bring both, bring to, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Because who really knows the heart of a man inside him but the man himself and God? Yes, out of the overflow of the heart the mouth speaks, so that's why... You know, you have certain hateful preachers that preach hate, and you have certain soft preachers that preach softness instead of real Christianity. And you have certain um, uh, young, dumb kids that say the N-word a lot <laughs> because they're um, rebellious and don't like to being told not to say the N-word. So they say it a lot behind closed doors, hoping that they don't get in trouble, but then years later they do. Um, so you can't really judge people, but you, uh, but you can judge a man by his fruits. And look at the fruits of uh, the Spirit. What are the fruits of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. I think those are things. I think those are things that are the fruits of the Spirit. Understanding, blah, blah, blah. And think about who is one person that that describes. I can think of like some people that that describes. I can think of one person that that describes. I think Jesse's a pretty good example of those things. And if you deny that, then... And you're going to judge him based on st stupid int intellectual fake knowledge of, of cherry-picked Bible verses that you believe that, and then you're going to criticize him for stuff that he says that are biblical, but you don't realize it. Then um, you're missing the point. Hopefully, that's hopefully you guys follow that. Um, Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart then each one's praise will come from God. So, that's 1 Corinthians 4, 2 through 5. I know that there's people that, that think the, the Apostle Paul was not a real Christian or something. They accuse him of being Antichrist. I really don't get that. Um, but, uh, there you have it. That's such a mess. People are so messy. And that's an example of that judgment and division that Satan's sowing among the people that are supposed to be on the side of good. So don't join into the division and judgment and backbiting. 
Skyward Journey says, Super Chat, keep up the great work, Hake, thank you. Jimmy Morgan says, what do you think about human composting? Whoa. Washington State recently became the first state to make it legal. Seems weird. Yeah, it does seem weird. I guess that means, like, the body decomposing fertilizes the ground. Um, uh, it does seem a little odd, but, I mean, that's, it seems kind of old school. But then Washington State is, if I'm not mistaken, is kind of liberal. And so I don't really trust them. Is Washington the one, one of the states that also legalized um, assisted suicide, basically? Or, you know, doctor-assisted suicide? what they call euthanasia, when you so-called have a terminal illness and you give up on life and you just want to kill yourself rather than suffer physically. One of those states did that. I don't know if it's Oregon or Washington and maybe California already. I don't know. I'm not for that. Um, somebody also says, yeah, uh, some people claim that this, this preacher that hates the gays says that gay is a totally different level of sin. Whatever. I don't care about that. There was one thing somebody asked me. Somebody texted me. Are you for that? No, I'm not for doctor assisted suicide. Somebody asked me, what do you believe? I don't know. So, anyways, um, shout out to D Live. Thank you guys. Appreciate you guys joining in. Joining my show on D Live. I'm on YouTube, Periscope, Facebook. Shout out to Facebook. Ah. What you think you become. This is from Marie Freeze. What you think you become, take thoughts into captivity. That's another thing. Like it's the Bible says take every thought into captivity. It says stuff like um it says be still and know God. It says um, it says all kinds of things that back up what Jesse's about. Let me see. White History Month. There is some things that I wanted to get to about White History Month. Um, there is, uh, White History Month is something to be celebrated. But I have a comment about it that I didn't get to when I was wearing my White, His White History Month t-shirt. Oh my gosh, we're over time. Okay, real fast. White History Month, um, just like black stuff, um, it wasn't we who built the country, we whites who are living today, it was those whites who were living then. Those were the whites that were the strong ones. We need to get back to strength. So um, any, any white today who's all proud of, of himself for coming from the lineage, supposedly, that created this, this great country, no, man, that has nothing to do with you. You gotta, you gotta live your own life. You gotta make America great again yourself. Make yourself great. Just like the blacks who are like, we were slaves. You were not slaves. Um, blacks today are reaping the rewards, those with any sense, are reaping the rewards of slavery more than anybody else in this country. Whites are not reaping the rewards of slavery. The blacks are. The blacks who, who are descended from blacks who came here. Because you get to be here in America. Be grateful. So, that's that. Church with Jesse Lee Peterson in less than an hour at uh, 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 Central, 2 Eastern. Rebuildingtheman.com slash church. Subscribe to Bond Rebuilding the Man Facebook and uh, YouTube. And that. And we are to live tomorrow. Thanks, guys.